I was watching the film School of Rock the other day, which has a scene to the background of one of the songs by The Ramones, one of the most influential punk bands from 1970s America, a band that I was quite fond of back when I was an edgy teen myself. I decided to listen to some of their tracks and something caught my attention when I was listening to some of the more popular songs. The band being formed in 1974, releasing their first album named The Ramones in 1976. And that was the themes that were covered in these songs. Now, like a lot of punk music, a lot of it's about teenage angst, anger, anti-establishment, violence, falling in love, not falling in love. But with the Ramones, quite a lot of the lyrics are also about the Second World War and the Third Reich. So in this video, I'd like to take a look at why this Nazi imagery and lyrics actually became associated with the punk movement and the Ramones in particular, because I thought it was an interesting story to make a video about. Now, we find this influence on the first album from 1976 called The Ramones in a few places. The most obvious and perhaps their favorite song is called Blitzkrieg Bop. And this, of course, refers back to the method of warfare employed by the Germans at the start of the Second World War, the Blitzkrieg, or Lightning War, their style that incorporated various elements of armored spearheads followed by massed infantry assaults together with aircraft at the same time. However, what's interesting is that the Ramones song, The Blitzkrieg Bob, actually was not meant to be called The Blitzkrieg Bob, but had been penned as Animal Bob. And it was only later that some of the lyrics were changed, changing shouting in the back to shoot him in the back to make it a more militaristic theme. It therefore seems that this layer of Second World War affiliation has been acquired rather than being in the structure of the song itself. Some critics have attempted to see the lyrics of the song being about the Blitzkrieg itself, and so have linked things like Hey Ho, Let's Go to the soldiers marching, forming in lines, uh, people losing their minds, being inside the panzers or the vehicles that were being used in the Blitzkrieg itself. However, I'm not entirely convinced by this explanation. When asked, the Ramones themselves said that the song was about their fans, their audience at a gig who were really enjoying the music, who were going crazy. And it seems that that matches what the lyrics are saying a lot better than this more metaphorical explanation of it being about German soldiers in the war. Particularly when it was called Animal Bop, first of all, a bop being like a kind of dance or music, that seems to fit much better. And that later then some of the lyrics have been changed, the title has been changed to make it somewhat extremer, seems more likely to me. However, the song on this album that really revs up the Nazi imagery is Today Your Love, Tomorrow the World. Now this quote, Today Your Love, Tomorrow the World, follows a formula that is often attributed to Hitler, which is Today Germany, Tomorrow the World. However, upon further inspection, it seems that Hitler never actually said this in any of his speeches, but rather that it is a quote taken from a song written about the Hitler youth, and then also still slightly misquoted. Written either in 1930 or 1932, this song was written by Hans Baumann, who was himself a member of the Hitler Youth, and he penned a song called Es Sitten die Morschen Knochen. So the title then was most likely inspired by this song, and that seems further supported by the fact that the lyrics are indeed about the Second World War and quite shockingly are written from the perspective of a Nazi himself. As the first lyrics say, I'm a shock trooper in a stupor, yes I am, I'm a Nazi schatzer. Now the song was penned by D.D. Ramon real name Douglas Glenn Colvin, who in fact was half German, his mother being German, and his father being an American soldier who had served in the Second World War in the European theatre of combat as well as in Korea. Now, while he was growing up, he grew up largely in Germany on American army bases and moved around several towns while being uh, in Germany. And it said in the bi biography of the Ramones by Everett True that for recreation, Dee Dee would scour the old war fields for Nazi paraphernalia to sell to visiting American soldiers, bullets, gas masks, bayonets, helmets. 
And so it seems that Dee Dee, growing up in post-war America, developed a certain fascination for the Third Reich and for everything that had happened in that period. The lyrics of the song shockingly contrast the words Nazi and the words Schatze, Schatze being a German word for sweetheart, as we have the horrors of National Socialism beside love, something that would become quite a theme in punk, and indeed shock value seems to be the main reason why this is done. This is actually commented on in the Poetics of Punk the Ramones by Alex Tetugu, who says the identification of the singer as a Nazi and the rhyming term of endearment has ominous undertones to say the least. The juxtaposition of Nazis against the German word for sweetheart, darling or treasure, Schatze, comes as a shock to the world of commercial and popular music. The gesture, comparing love and fascism, bringing together almost antithetical topics, strikes a dissonant tone. This is in fact counter to what was deemed admissible in the music industry. The association with fascism would have done much work to discredit the Ramones, to place them outside American society and harm their record sales. But the publicity that came with the controversy and shock quickly became marketable. The irony and affectation, as with their posing as anti-intellectual, eventually came to reconcile the commercial world of music with the absurdity of punk's amateur forms and lyrical content. The adoption of national socialist emblems fits a wider movement in mid to late 1970s punk, as we can see in several of these images, where particularly Nazi and some insignia, as well as from several other extreme political movements, found its way onto t-shirts, emblems and pin badges that were being used. There was a general fascination with the Second World War and particularly National Socialism, including the Holocaust, that was used by many of these artists to great outrage and controversy, understandably, at the time and still today. Part of the explanation for this from many of these band members was that they had grown up in the post-war generation and were simply acting out against that generation with the most shocking symbols of the most terrible regime that was to hand. The Ramones themselves didn't wear any Nazi insignia on stage or have it on their album covers. And it's important to note that a lot of this usage by punks wasn't an endorsement as such, even though it can be very much debated about how ethical using such insignia ever is but rather was done for the shock factor and sometime later in the late 1960s and 1970s a splinter movement of actual Nazi punk music, racist punk music also emerged that did endorse the message behind the insignia. But to go back to the Ramones, it's still surprising that we find these references to the Nazis and indeed songs saying from the perspective of I am a Nazi, given that the man that was singing out these lyrics, Joey Ramone, who had been born Jeffrey Hyman, was himself Jewish. And so that is rather interesting that these lyrics are incorporated by this band and perhaps leads some, to some kind of tension within the lyrics as is identified by John Stratton in his article Jews, Punk and the Holocaust. He writes, by the album's conclusion, speaking about the 1976 Ramones album, which begins with Blitzkrieg Bop and ends with the song we've just been discussing, it is clear that the nihilistic malaise of violence and death which pervades the lyrics and which is counterbalanced by the power, energy, and sheer melody of the music, has its psychological roots in what the Ramones present as the Nazi worldview. All these songs, we need to remember, are sung by Jewish Joey Ramone. While the Judicide is, as is most punk lyrics not mentioned, there is a repressed tension in the lyrics of Nazi domination, Tomorrow the World being sung by a Jew. He goes on to state that this tension that emerges in 1976 with these uh, inspired lyrics being sung by the Jewish Joey Ramone isn't actually resolved until 1985. In their later albums, they don't really call back to the Second World War much. The Vietnam War is more prominent and is mentioned in several ways, as are the other song lyrics, which appear a lot less deep when they are being sung, even though none of the Ramones lyrics seem particularly deep and are actually all incredibly surface level in some way. The way that this was resolved was in 1985 in a song that was called a single, Bonzo Goes to Bitburg. And it's this song that is in School of Rock and that always made me think and actually got me inspired to make this video because there's a very interesting political situation that inspired this song to be written. Now the song Bonzo Goes to Bitburg refers to the German town of Bitburg 
uh, where there is a cemetery from the Second World War. Now, Bonzo is actually referring to a chimpanzee character uh, in a film. However, the co-star, as well as that chimpanzee in the film, was Ronald Reagan, who later on would, of course, become president of the United States. And so, Bonzo Goes to Bitburg is nice alliteration for the visit of Ronald Reagan going to Bitburg Cemetery in 1985, together with the West German Chancellor at the time. The reason why a song was written about this was that it was incredibly controversial, because it was for the 40th anniversary of the end of the Second World War, and indeed there were many German war graves as well as American graves in this cemetery. But of the 2,000 German war graves that were there, 49 of them were for members who had been in the SS, the Schutzstaffel, the hardcore uh, ideological zealots of the Third Reich who had carried out many of the terrible atrocities against minorities, against Jews and other people that were deemed unworthy by the German regime of the war. And so in America, this was deemed as completely unacceptable that an American president would go and lay a wreath on the graves of men who had been in the SS and who had committed terrible war crimes during the war. Reagan tried to defend his actions by saying, these SS troops were the villains, as we know, that conducted the persecutions and all. But there are 2,000 graves there, and most of those, the average age is about 18. I think that there's nothing wrong with visiting that cemetery where those young men are victims of Nazism also. Even though they were fighting in German uniform, drafted into service to carry out the hateful wishes of the Nazis, they were victims, just as surely as the victims in the concentration camps. But this only sparked further outrage because it seemed that he was trying to equivocate German soldiers with those who had been murdered in the German death camps. And it is to this which Joey Ramone responded in an interview in 1985, expressing why the band had decided to write this song about Reagan's trip to Bitburg. He said, we had watched Reagan going to visit the SS cemetery on TV and we were disgusted. We're all good Americans, but Reagan's thing was like forgive and forget. How can you forget six million people being gassed and roasted? And so the Ramones wrote this song uh, nine years after their first album had had all of these references to the Second World War on them. And it came at it from a very different perspective. So I thought that was quite an interesting thing to make a little video about this kind of usage in the 1970s of the Second World War, particularly National Socialism and the insignia that was connected to it and why it was done. Because I've been listening to these uh, punk songs by the Ramones on their, particularly on their first album and Bonzo goes to Bitburg and thought, how is that all connected with one another? So do you think there was a deeper message behind this, uh, trying to say something about the society at the time, or was it simply done for shock factor? And actually, as we can see through Bonzo Goes to Bitburg, the Ramones had no sympathies for it whatsoever, but feel free to make up your own mind and let me know in the comments below.